All right, guys, we're in New Orleans at Waste Expo. I'm your host, John Cook. Welcome to the podcast. Stay loaded. We've got a great show for you guys today. But before that, Casey, roll the intro, and we're going to come right back at you with some really great stuff. We're at, we're at Waste Expo in New Orleans. I got Curtis Smith here with Smith Truck Body. Curtis, how you doing today? Not bad. Yourself? Doing great, man. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Hey, so guys, what we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to talk about trucks and most importantly, the upfitter. I know you guys are always messaging me about like, what's the perfect truck for me? What should I buy? Uh, what brand? What hook? Yada, yada, yada. Guys, there, there's three components when you're building a hook truck. There's the manufacturer of the truck. There's the hook manufacturer. And there's the upfitter. And guys, in my opinion, the upfitter is the most important of the three and that's why I got Curtis on today. We're going to talk about all things hook trucks and most importantly, the hook, uh, the upfitter and why it's important to go with the right upfitter mm -hmm. because you can buy the right truck, guys. You can, you can buy the perfect hook, but your upfitter can make your life hell or he's just going to absolutely dial this thing in that you'll be in love forever. So, Curtis, before we get started, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about uh, Smith Truck Body. Tell us a little bit about your story and... Uh, how you got to New Orleans? Yeah, so uh, you know, I uh, my my roots are in the waste and scrap recycling industry. Um, worked for a smaller family operated scrapyard that started a waste business. I uh, started as the first driver, me and fifty containers, and uh, you know it was like, hey, here's this hook truck, go figure it out. And uh, by the way, there's this trailer thing that you got to haul behind you. <laughs> we don't know how to use it. Um, go figure it out. And, you know, quickly we kind of grew. I moved up from there to sales and management. And, you know, I was tasked with trying to find, you know, some, some niche markets that could make us some money. And quickly, within three and a half years, we were at, uh, I want to say it was about 12 trucks and 400 containers when That's they a, ultimately sold number. the GFL. So, um, you know, when they sold the GFL, I uh, left, went to uh, another company that had worked on our trucks and did some of the maintenance. You know, in the time uh, when I was there, you know, we built a lot of our own trucks because we just had a terrible time with upfitters. Um, you know, we ordered a truck once with a nine foot spread lift axle. It showed up with a regular tri axle and we're like, hey, this is wrong. We can't even use this thing in Michigan. And, you know, there was a lot of stories like that, that ultimately I started building our own trucks, you know, um, nice. as managing the company. You know, but I was at night, you know, I was still kind of building the trucks and going through our maintenance team. And so when I when I spun off, I went to a company called Quality Truck and, you know, work with them. We uh, at the time they had built wreck trucks, which I was kind of cool, you know, like taking something from nothing. I love doing that. Yeah. And, you know, uh, worked with them, you know, implemented kind of the hook lift thing. I, uh, you know, my you know, my roots and background have always been the waste and recycling market. And so when, you know, they made some few changes and we, you know, peacefully, you know, parted ways. I started Smith Truck Body. Um, we still work together on some things, you know, because they're right down the road. They're, you know, they're a good group of guys. Nice. And, uh, you know, so started Smith Truck Body. Uh, started, you know, I needed a place to start. Uh, luckily, I had a, you know, my own personal shop at the house was big enough to pull a truck in and build it. And, uh you know, the benefits of being a gearhead, <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> so we, you know, we did that, started with just me, you know, during the day I'm doing all the sales activities at night. I'm, I'm wrenching, building trucks and uh, until it got to the Sounds point. Sounds like somebody else is building a truck over there. Right <laughs> exactly. Now too. Love it. Um, Last minute build for Waste <laughs> Expo. Get it while it's hot. So, you know, hired the first employee and just snowballed from there. 
found a facility in Rosebush, Michigan, which is the next town over from where we're at. And that's where you guys are located now. You guys yes. are in, okay in Michigan. Yep, Rosebush, Michigan. Um, there's there's like three things in Rosebush, and we're one of the three things. Um, well, it, it, and guys, this is important to know because Michigan is centrally located pretty much in the U.S. So if you're an East Coast guy or you're down in Florida or you're all the way down in San Diego or up in Washington, it's pretty centrally located in the middle of the country so they can get to wherever they need to get to. That's important to remember. You're not just buying from a guy all the way on the other side of the country that's 3,200 miles away, Mm -hmm. they can get to you pretty easily. And that's a big consideration when buying a hook truck. Yeah. And, you know, we, we work with a lot of, you know, transportation companies and with our truck dealers to try to get trucks to people. I mean, you know, one of the things, you know, I've always felt confident doing is, you know, I I stress to all my guys in the shop, like, we're not just building this truck locally. We are going to build this truck and never see it again. And any problem with it, we are going to own it with a phone call. And, you know, we feel confident, you know, we can ship trucks all over. You know, that's kind of one of our things we do is, you know, build it good enough that you can ship it across the country and not have a phone call saying, hey, this is broke. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, no, we have we have a 12,000 square foot facility. We're adding on another 4,000 square foot now here in August. Congratulations. Um, that's that'll fantastic. That'll be our store. Thanks. And, uh, you know, just kind of growing from there. Uh <clears throat> We're, we're still kind of a small mom and pop, you know, we're not this giant body company, you know, that that's what gives us the advantage of moving fast. You know, we can move fairly quickly because there is no red tape. What, what, what is lead time right now on a truck? Let's say somebody um, has a chassis, because there's a couple ways guys build. They buy a chassis and ship it to an upfitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know one of the, the real advantages you guys have is you'll actually take and build these up, set them on the ground, much like this truck behind us, mm-hmm. available for sale, ready to go. Talk to us a little bit about lead time, about planning. When do they get you involved in the process? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so lead time, you know, lead time on trucks, it, everybody's been, you know, hopeful, but it's uh, still, you know, roughly a year out if you were to order a truck today on most, you know, there, there's ebbs and flows. And then if you got someone who has a line slot, they might be able to sell that to you. Um you know, and we work all the different ways, you know, bring us a truck, we'll build it, you know, we'll even mount on used trucks, not always preferred, but, you know, that's an easy, like, get us involved in day one before you buy the truck. Um, you know, it might seem like a good deal now, but it needs like 45 changes before it can actually work for Especially your application. Especially when you start talking wheelbase and you're talking <clears throat> about mm-hmm. what what pound capacity hook lift you're putting on, what length cans you want to run. There's more to it, guys, than just looking at a truck and being like, that's a good deal. Yeah. Um, but getting the wheelbase, obviously getting the right GVW mm-hmm. and all those things seem like the right transmission so you can get the right PTO on it, a million things that go into it. Yes. And, you know, as far as getting involved, day one day one get involved with an upfitter um because a lot of the truck dealers unless they work very closely with an upfitter they don't know what they're specking you know they're just specking a general spec and it might not work for you or you might have the upfitter pulling what little hair they have left out um you know because not everything is going to work in this application sure so then you know we would walk we walk through with our truck dealer and the customer to put together a truck that's going to work for them Curtis, talk to me about, like, I personally think an upfitter brings the most value. Mm -hmm. I I feel like the trucks, yeah, there's preference. Maybe somebody wants Chevy or Ford or Peterbilt or Zuzu or Kenworth. But the truck manufacturers are kind of what the truck manufacturers are. Mm -hmm. There's guys that are brand loyal. Everyone builds a pretty good truck anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing on hooks. I think that there's a lot of different brands out there. I think the quality is super high with all of them. Yeah, guys are going to prefer one over another, maybe based on what they're running. So for me, I think all the value is in the upfit. So let's talk about the upfit. Let's talk about the importance and the value a great upfitter with a lot of experience that builds a lot of trucks. Mm -hmm. Maybe the questions they ask... uh, different things that you do to help guys out because let's face it you send a truck out and especially guys there's so many guys that are buying first time hook trucks you got to get to somebody that'll be transparent Mm -hmm. they'll be honest with you they'll have the tough conversation with you they'll tell you what you should and shouldn't be buying so let's let's go down that a little bit curtis walk me through that 
I come to you and I'm like, Curtis, um, hey, I've been running a Max D trailer. I've got 20 bins and I'm making the change to hook lift. Yeah. Send so me a truck. Walk me through that process. So the first question I ask usually is, do you want to retain your Max XD bins or do you want to scrap it all and buy new? Um, you know, it's possible if you're you're handy enough or you have a weld shop locally to repurpose those because you got to re-rail them. Most people don't realize when they buy into the, pro the proprietary trailers, like the rail widths are all different. It's not a standard rail setup. What, what do you see? What are you seeing as a cost just generally? Now, remember, guys. This is just general. What are you seeing for a cost to re-rail a van? It's roughly about $1,000 I've seen for most shops, you know, to, to re-rail and add a hook. Um, you know, 1000 to 1500 depending on, you know, what size the container is and what they want to do. Uh, so that's kind of one of the things, you know, I ask first, you know, if and then what length are those bins? That, that determines, do you want to, you know, stay with your 14-foot containers? Do you want to only stay in the 14-foot container arena? Do you want to reach out to 16-footers? Do you want to all of a sudden want to haul 22 footers? You know, that that's a that's the number one conversation we have to have. And you almost have to plan your container size and then plan the truck around it. You can't you can't plan the truck and then like, oh hey, I know this truck only works for 14 foot containers, but I'm gonna put an 18 foot container on it. Well, the tarp system most likely won't cover it. You know, you're gonna have to be over your federal, you know, bumper laws potentially, depending on what state, like Michigan, where you are allowed four foot. You know, but not all states. Most of them are two foot. Yeah, m most are two, and we kind of preach the two foot. Mm -hmm. You know, two feet foot of overhang. So, all right, so good step. Really, first conversation is dumpster, can, bin, length. Mm -hmm. What are we doing with your existing? Somebody says, you know, I'm not really sure yet, uh, but those are some good points. Where do you take the conversation from there? So, yeah, uh, you know, if, if you they've got a rough idea, you know, I can say, hey, I can put you in contact with a good can manufacturer to get you a price so you can weigh your options. Uh, you know, because I, I see myself, uh, you know, as kind of the guide through this. I'm, I'm not trying to push hard and make the sale. I want things to be right for them because of all the headaches I had to deal with at one point. And it's going to make your life easier on the back yes, end. Yes, absolutely. You, you build them the right truck from day one. This guy isn't on your phone in three months being like, what the hell? Like, mm -hmm. this thing won't do this. It just makes it better for everybody, yes. a better experience. And they're more likely to come back by a second truck, a third truck, a fourth truck with an upfitter that treated them right. Exactly. So then we walk through, you know, I have a, a pretty standard under CDL spec. We got to determine what, you know, the majority of guys are under CDL now. Um, you know, When you say the majority, 80% of the guys? I would say 80% of the new businesses are staying under CDL because of the hurdles of getting their CDL or the cost involved. Um, or just keeping the simplicity. Simplicity, when, absolutely. When you start playing CDL, mm. drivers run the market. Mm -hmm. And you can take an under CDL truck, and if you've got a 19-year-old kid that is pretty handy, been on the farm, been in construction his whole life, he's a plug-and-play at 19, and you put him in an under CDL truck, and you're you're going to business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can't stress, the, you know, you kind of touched on it before in another podcast, like with that, is you have to have the equipment operator mindset that has the ability to drive a truck. That's the best way to handle this. Um, so you can take someone who has that machinery and equipment background, you know, that you can stick them in the truck and they're gonna be successful. So that's where the under CDL market has really kind of come into play. And so, you know, we gotta determine what under CDL is. You know, some guys don't realize like there's a couple different classes of under CDL let, trucks. Let, let's talk about this because specifically, you got the under CDL at 26,000, which everyone understands. Mm -hmm. Take a minute and explain this 33,000 GVW D rated. Yes. I know a lot of you guys listening and watching to this are going to be like, I hear so much that I can just take a 33,000 <laughs> and D rate it. Walk us through what that yeah. really looks like so these guys are informed so they're not misled. So in the old the the olden days, <laughs> uh, you could take a truck that was on the lot that was thirty three thousand, and you know the manufacturer you had to change out a spring uh, or something. You could derate it to a twenty six thousand GBW truck. Um, Nowadays, there's only a very, very, very few manufacturers that allow you to do that with an existing truck that's already built. The majority of the trucks, you have to do it when you order it. And, and honestly, what it is is axle weights is what most people are referring to, your axle weights and your suspension. 
a 26 GVW truck and a 33 GVW truck anymore are almost virtually identical. You know, maybe a few different transmission options and the axle. The axle is identical. It's just tagged differently. Um, so, like, uh, we have an Isuzu FVR over in Roll Right booth right now. That is, you know, it's a 33000 We're going to go take a look at that after a little bit, guys. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you the trucks that he's got here, and we're going to explain the differences as we walk around the trucks. So if you're, if you're part of this conversation and listen to us, don't worry. We're going to walk around these trucks and get an expert's opinion on, like, why we do things and how we put them there. I say we. I mean Curtis, <laughs> but obviously I'm here, so I'm yeah. going to say we. Working on remodeling your kitchen or basement, adding a new addition to your house, or upgrading your flooring? Units on-site storage is a convenient solution tailored to fit your needs. Our on-site storage solution clears the way for your remodeling project, allowing you to keep your belongings, equipment, or materials out of the construction mess to stay organized and stress-free. Take the stress out of your remodeling project with Units. Um, so yeah, the, the Isuzu is one of the few that will still allow you to derate an existing truck. Um, so we can take that FVR before it's titled, send paperwork into Isuzu, derate it from 33 to 26. Cause the only difference between the FVR and the FTR is the transmission and the rear axle weight rating, uh, for the most part, you know. So, so, so if I heard you correctly, Isuzu is one of the only ones left that I can take a 33,000 GVW truck on the lot mm -hmm. that's still on an MSO that hasn't been titled, yep. and I can still derate it. Yes. Everything else has to come from the factory derated. Yes. So like uh, my that's freight liners. part, guys. So if someone's telling you they got a Peterbilt and it's 33, or a Kenworth and it's 33, and they just tell you, oh, just derate it when you re license it, that's not happening. No, no. And, you know, so like uh, my freight liners. I order those in. They are essentially what people want to call as a D-rated truck. Allison 3000. It's got, you know, it's it's not 33,000 pound axles. It's got a 12 front and a 19 rear usually. Uh, you know, because a lot of what people don't realize, a lot of 26 GVW trucks are still like a 12 front and a 19 rear just tagged as a 26. Um, so the axle ratings is what determines your GVW usually and your, your tires. And state to state, it doesn't matter sometimes whether it's a 33 or a 26 as far as how they're going to treat you when you, they pull you over. If you are over 26,000 pounds when they pull you over, you're getting yanked out of that truck. doesn't matter if you're a in a 19. Yeah, it comes. doesn't matter if you're in a 19, mm -hmm. if you're in an F450, if they scale you out and you're, you're over that 26,000 mark. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So that's the big thing. Like everybody wants a D-rated truck so they can run this truck overweight with an under CDL driver. That's just a giant ticket waiting to happen. Um, and so a I big and a big misbelief that mm -hmm. these guys are oh under CDL we want to stay under that. Mm -hmm. So guys, there, there's some really really good information right here, right from a guy that orders the trucks that understands it. If you guys have any questions on D-rate stuff. We're going to put up Curtis's information at the end of this. I'll have Casey flash it up, put his socials on there, put his cell phone. Put, well, mm -hmm. Hell, we're going to put his home phone number on it. <laughs> if you got a question about D-rate trucks, Good thing they're the same. Sunday afternoons, call <laughs> Curtis at home, and he's going to answer them all for you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's talk about upfitting and how I believe not all upfitters are created equally, and I think the upfitter makes or breaks the truck. Yeah. How important is the upfitting? It is the most essential thing. You could take the best hook lift brand out there, and if you do a terrible job mounting it, one, that's a giant liability issue. Two, it's, you know, no one's going to come back to you. You know, you want to build business. You want to build accounts. Just like in the waste industry, like your, your best – you know, revenue is building accounts, not, you know, the homeowners are great. Not one and done. Not one and done. This duns. isn't college basketball. This no. isn't one and done, guys. No. We, we want to build lasting, meaningful, trusting relationships. There's no doubt about it. Exactly. And so that's really important to make sure the, the fit and finish on that not only looks good, but it functions. Um, 
you know, I've seen beautiful trucks that the moment they extend the hook lift, it's going to rip hoses because they didn't think that through. Um, there's not many upfitters out there that have had to actually run these trucks daily. So they don't think about things from that perspective. And even, you know, the guys building the trucks, we, one other thing to look for is an outfitter that does service and sales, you know, parts sales. Absolutely. Because it's going to go down guys. Yeah. It's going to go down at some point. Absolutely. And these guys, not only the, the biggest learning thing is, is finding the problems that occur daily and fixing them, you know, and kind of mitigating that risk before it actually ever gets sold. So, you know, oh, hey, we found, you know, the way these hoses are routed is a terrible problem. Let's fix this on our upfit side, you know, so that way we don't have this problem again. And that's one of the big things to look for is, you know, there's a lot of truck dealers and it sounds terrible, but there's a lot of truck dealers that go, you know, that sell roll off trucks that couldn't even tell you the first thing about it. <clears throat> um, so it's hard to go back to them for service because like you could buy it from a, tr- a truck dealer, but they're you know hey this and thing the broke. First thing they they're going to tell, tell you, though, you sorry. Hey, we do chassis. <clears throat> mm-hmm. we're, we're we're not touching anything above it. All right. So when I think of boat fitting, there's a couple things that come to mind. Obviously, the system, the mounting of the system, mm-hmm. tarps, placements of hydraulic tanks. Rear bumper, which is a huge mm-hmm. pet peeve of mine, mm-hmm. is people not being consistent on the upfit. I buy one truck a year later, two years later, I want to come back and I'm like, you know the truck you built me <clears throat> in the spring of 2020? Mm-hmm. I want that same style bumper. I really like how that fit and flow. Yep. And they've completely changed it. Nobody knows how to do it. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows anything about it. So <clears throat> I'm looking at PTO and yes. functionality. Will this, guys, your PTO needs to work in park, neutral, reverse, and drive. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work in all four, I mean, obviously park for the automatic guys. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work in all four, you're going to get into a pickle. There are so many trucks out there that only work in neutral, and the second you put it in reverse, it kicks your PTO out. Mm -hmm. That is an upfitter that does not know what they're doing. I, I said it. I'm mm-hmm. going to own it. But yeah. That's how I feel. And so you take all these components, guys. This is what an upfitter does. So let's start at the front. Mm-hmm. Start with the tarp. Hydraulic tank. Work me back. What's different? Yeah. So we, you know, everything we try to do is a quality job. You know, there's literally, that's the reason why I put my name on the business. You know, if I if you can't put your name to it, why are you putting it out the door? And, and all of my guys are the same philosophy. So I try to pick vendors the same way. Um, we use a ton of roll right tarp systems. Um, not only are they locally, you know, that's a nice benefit for us. The quality is there. Um, you know, the, they, the, they build a fantastic system. They do. The, the gantries are powder coated, um, again, locally to us. Um, and, you know, there's trucks I've installed, you know, five, six, seven years. The gantry still looks brand new because of the quality of, of the powder coat. Um, and it's it's already a fully assembled system. So you're taking a lot of human error on the upfitter side out of that because most guys don't realize, like, I've quoted other tarp systems. No matter what flip tarp system you want, it's almost going to cost the same amount of money, whether it's the, co- the cost of parts is cheaper, but the labor is a lot more because you have to – it is like dumping a box of Legos on the floor – and trying to assemble Let, let me ask you this. I get asked this all the time. How many <clears throat> inches back a cab do you need to install a tarp before the system starts? I've heard 12 inches. I've heard 8 inches. I've heard people like, I can squeeze that in in 6 inches. It how depends you, on the how brand. How much do you need? Roll right. How much do you need? Roll right, you need 8 inches. 8 inches, guys. Write um, it down. You know. You can DM me, but it's 8 inches. Call Curtis at home. 8 inches. To install a roll right gantry behind your cab before the system starts, mm-hmm. and there's you know there's other ones you can get away in with with six inches, um, you know like uh, the Donovan Quick Flip the way it's set up, you can get that really tight against the back of the cab because the spool is forward, it's not centered on the the gantry, um, and then the hydraulic power pack's a lot slimmer, so you can have a little bit more room there. Um, I don't like to go super close. 
you know, like that six inch mark, you know, a little it's, bit of flexing, a little bit of vibration going down the road. And, um, you know, guys go from, Hey, I'm only running a four foot side container when you build the truck. Oh, I think these 25 yards would be an awesome thing. Well, then you realize your tarp arms hit the front of the container when you go to flip up the tarp and that you have to jib the, the box back just to tarp it and then slide it back forward. A lot of extra movements that you don't need to be doing. Yes. And sooner or later, someone's going to rip that off. Yes, absolutely. And that's one thing I love about Roll Right. You know, people can knock the arms all they want. You get a driver that sets off a container with the tarp system on. You're just replacing a bow set and maybe arms, sometimes maybe an axle. You're not replacing that whole gantry and tower right. system. Whereas in some other manufacturers. It's going to break away and, fall, and bend off and fall off. Yeah. It, all their manufacturers, you're replacing the whole tarp system when that happens because they just annihilate everything. Um, so that's one of the things I really love about it is they, they've kind of built some failure points. So, it, yes, those arms are expensive up front sometimes, but at the same time, you're not replacing an $8,000 tarp system. A whole system. Yeah. All right. So you get the tarp. Now you move to hydraulic tanks. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of saddle mounts. And guys are now moving to tank mounts that are up on the tarp system. Mm -hmm. um, what's your what's your take on that? You know, and it really depends on what your hydraulic system is. You know, so some guys don't realize this. Um, you know, on the smaller trucks, a lot of clutch pumps are more common instead of a PTO just because of, you know, on the Chevys, it gives you that, you know, live drive feature. Um, but also a lot of people don't realize this on a Chevy. You have to take off the after treatment system to put... A PTO on, well, as an upfitter, I don't really want the liability of that after treatment system getting cracked into. I don't think Chev I don't think Chevrolet wants the liability no. of anything no. on that. Anyone that's experienced it is known. Yeah. Once you start playing with that, it's a different truck forever. Exactly. So um, usually we will go to above frame top mounted tank if we're running a clutch pump because you need to have that flow. You know, the the tank needs to be, be higher higher to feed it with a gravity type yeah. flow. And so. I, we usually, the majority of our stuff is a piston pump when we do a hook lift. Um, piston pumps are high pressure, so they can kind of, you know, make up for a few things. We usually do a saddle mount with, with all of our multi-lift mounts. It, it's usually a saddle mount unless, like I said, unless we're running a clutch pump. And <clears throat> it kind of blends everything in on the side. Um, so it, it makes it nice. You can't hang it down too low. Otherwise, that suction hose is just going to get annihilated in a landfill. Yeah. Uh, Damage. You're going to rip yeah. it off. Something's going to happen. You're going to pull a hose off, mm -hmm. anything like that. So, obviously, clearance is your friend. Yes, absolutely. And that's one thing to look for. You know, we try to keep everything up. One of the other first questions we ask when someone's looking at a truck, especially, you know, with the multi-lift system, are you running combo containers or are you running hook only containers? There's a big difference in that because that front roller. And how much space that front roller needs to slide forward mm -hmm. when you're doing a cable pull. Exactly. So on a hook lift system, the majority of hook systems, we have to move everything down to clear that front roller. Otherwise, it's just going to annihilate stuff when it hits it. For, first time jibbing in and you're done. Yes. You just clean it off. Yep. So that's, that's one of the other questions we try to ask. Uh, you know, so, and on a roll-off truck, you know, usually everything's side-mounted hydraulic tank. Um, I do prefer to go to a behind cab above frame mounted tank. I really like the above frame roll-offs. It's, yeah. it's a more like mountain hook lift. It's a lot cleaner. And in Michigan, you know, with all that extra axles and stuff on the bigger trucks, it just makes things cleaner. Cleaner install. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Talk to me about fenders. Fenders are what, What's your preference? On, fenders are a huge thing. <laughs> I've got a, a phone full of buddies right now that are ripping fenders off mm -hmm. and mud flaps off. Every time they go to the landfill, they're doing, they're doing fender work. Yeah. So we use all of our poly fenders are made locally to us. We have an amazing company that we work with. <clears throat> Been in the industry for years. And it wraps around just enough that you don't have to put a mud flap on it. Love so it. then you do not rip off your mud flap and the whole fender in the landfill. That's one of the things we try to do. I'll take you around on this truck and show you. Yeah, I'd um, love to see it. And I think on the other one I saw some custom colors. Yes, so we can do some custom colors. Uh Dude, blue, that's, orange, that's where, red, that's yellow. That's where it's at right there. So we can do oh lime green, you know, dark forest green. There's there's a lot of different custom colors and we can do, you know, the single axle, we can do tandems. 
Um, you know, and then the mounts, a lot of people overlook that too. Um, you know, the mounting is just as good as the fender. Uh, you know, that's just as important. If you have a terrible mount system, that fender is going to rattle loose and then it's going to eat through the tire. Yep. It's going to eat through the fender. It's going to eat yeah. through the side of the fenders when you're mm-hmm. running heavy or you're putting any extra pressure on it. Talk to me about bumpers. For some reason, bumpers are, uh, it's a huge pain pivot mm-hmm. point for me because I like a clean bumper. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just like somebody welded something on and good to go. I don't care how many times you tell me it's because mm-hmm. when you rip it off. I think a bumper should be sexy. I think it should be stylish. Mm-hmm. I think it should be functional. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I use my rear bumper all the time as a step yes. to get into my shorter cans, my 12-footers, my 10-footers. I'm always using that bumper. Talk to me about what sets your bumpers different, what your philosophy is. Yeah, so it. we build our bumpers in-house 100%. Uh, it's a design, you know, I've I've kind of fine-tuned over the years from my years at the scrapyard, I, I was building them out of half-inch steel, you know, for our big 60K hook lift trucks. Oh, and that's some thick steel. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, we kind of, I fine-tuned it over the years. Now it's a formed piece of quarter inch with a quarter inch faceplate. That's a big important, like anything thinner, it's going to rust jack. It's going to bend the first time. Um, but that also comes into play well for putting tow hitches on mm-hmm. most of these hooks, which I know most everyone's. Yeah. Yeah, at, putting a tow hitch. You on. need a tow point usually. Um, not even if you're towing anything. Just if you're stuck in a landfill, it, it is a grab. Point. Put something in there so that they're not ripping on your bumper, yep. ripping on your hook system. So, yeah. that guys, I don't know if you guys just picked up on that. This is a huge point. Most outfitters are going to charge you extra for what they call their tow package, but Curtis just brought up a really interesting point. You guys need to keep a hitch, a heavy pin something in your truck because if you do get stuck instead of having that and we all know landfill operators are not smooth um or very nice most of the time yeah exactly (laughs) that's where you want to pull from it's like the old tow pins on the larger peterbilts and kennelers and Mm -hmm. stuff like that have them tow you from the back out rather than from the front and just make a mess of your truck so there's it's more than just oh i might pull a trailer at some point it's an exit strategy for your landfills that get really soupy, mm-hmm. really muddy, yeah. they aren't compacted down. Great point on that. And so the other thing is protecting the lights. You know, we'll see we've got a two-inch lip on all of our bumpers to protect the lights. Um, for a long time, I would use a flange mount light. Uh, that kind of got old when you had to replace them. We found a new light that we use that's grommet mount that, like, locks into the grommet. It is hard to knock that thing out. I'm sure everybody's been behind a roll-off truck coming out of a landfill and lights are dangling because something knocked them out. Um, we really try to keep that. We also build a guard over top of the bullet lights in the back that doesn't obscure the bullet lights, but it keeps it when you're dumping a short container. It kind of sheds everything off that back bumper. Keep, keeps all the debris to fall yes. off it. You put backup cameras in them? Typically, yes. Okay. Uh, you is know, that, that's is an that an up? Okay, it's an option for yep. you guys. Um, you know, because a lot of guys, if they are running a 36-inch hook height, they're, they're going to want a camera because... Um, one thing most people don't realize, if you get anything above a 550, you can't see that 36-inch hook height, you know, and you need a camera. Guy, this is, this is a, this is a podcast into YouTube I've been telling I'm going to do forever. The, the 36-inch blind hook, even with a <laughs> camera, we'll get into that another yeah. time because I personally, I'm all about, I think we should standardize the industry. Mm-hmm. I think it should be 54 across the board. Mm-hmm. I think it would bring down costs on equipment. They're not trying to build 3654s. I think even the guys on the big cans that are running 62s can drop down with the advancement in 54s. I think it would, a cam manufacturer, instead of having to build 36s, 54s, 62s, standard rail, Mm -hmm. let's go standard hook. It's time, guys. But that's another conversation for another day. But it would be better for the industry across the board if manufacturers only had to build 54s instead of these adjustable 3654s <laughs> and all that stuff, but yeah. here no there. Great information. Great information. Mm-hmm. Guys, we're going to walk around. We're going to wrap this part of it up, but tell everybody, where can they find you? How do they get a hold of you? I'm thinking about buying a hook truck. You want to get involved from day one. You want to give them options. 
blasted. Yep. How do, how do they find you, Curtis? So uh, Smith Truck Body, if you want to look up our website, it's you know smithtruckbody.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, you know, in person. We also have an uh, online parts store, hookliftruckparts.com. Okay. You know, we, we carry a lot of the parts and tarps and anything like that. Uh, you know, and even if you're looking to installing your own hook lift, we have, you know, options for you too that walk you through that. Uh, you know, because not everybody, you know, a lot of people have the, the skills to do that. Sure. So, and then, uh, so our shop is located in Rosebush, Michigan. Gotcha. Um, 3943 Luthy Drive in Rosebush. We're like, like one of three things in Rosebush. If you're there, swing through Main <laughs> Street, you'll find yeah, them. Pretty much. And, uh, you know, so you can find us there. Uh, email me, Curtis at smithtruckbody.com. That's C-U-R-T-I-S. And, uh, you know, finally, you can reach out. Our main line is 989-930-0012. Uh, you know, and someone can put you in touch with me or my wife, Marla, can answer a lot of questions, too. She was in the industry with me as well on the scrap and waste side. Fantastic. So. Family built family run we can all relate to that we're all in the family business i love that love every part of it guys uh we're gonna wrap this up i'm gonna have casey wrap this up and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around the show with curtis and we're gonna get real specific on some trucks for a youtube that we're gonna post up on youtube so if you guys really want to see what we're talking about we'll get in there we'll get close with it Guys, as always, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. Curtis, thank, thank you, man. You. I appreciate you joining us today. It's been a huge help. Yeah, no, it's been great. Casey, wrap it up, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.